Supreme on the track. You're now tuned in to the Supreme Decision Legal Minute Podcast. Hello everyone, this is Supreme Decisions and you're listening to the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. Now, I want to go ahead and get right to it. We don't have to worry about the yak or the popcorn, but I'm going to get right into the teaching today. I'm going to do a little bit of reviewing, but I want you to understand something. There are several aspects of this that I want to actually get into. And I want you to understand, I'm trying to make sure we have a better understanding. Right? Because I've been talking about McCoy v. Louisiana. And I've talked about the power of you and the purpose of defending you. But there's one of the things that that actually popped up in my kind of studies today that kind of resonated with me. And I hope you guys catch what I'm giving to you today. Now, I'm going to give you something because, again, I have conversations almost on a daily basis of things that are being thrown at people for one reason or another. And today I'm going to start with Brookhart. V. Janice, and it's a 1966 case, and it explicitly goes into the context of, it goes into the ideals of what it is that you have the power to do, because a lot of times, again, you're being told that you have to do what your defense attorney is working for and telling you you have to do, but Brookhart V. Janice stated, a defendant cannot be forced to enter a plea against his wishes. Now, the reason why that popped up is because I constantly been telling you, McCoy v. Louisiana, they have to do what you're asking them to do because it's your life. It's your liberty. But what it goes into, even with Harris v. New York, and this is a 1971 case, no matter what counsel thinks is best, a defendant has the right to insist on a jury trial and to take the stand and to testify in his own defense. A defendant can also choose to dispute with a counsel, uh, excuse me. A defendant can also choose to dispense with counsel entirely and represent himself. And that goes back to Beretta v. California. Now, why do I say that? Because I informed you yesterday that the actual ideals of defending oneself is the the backbone of the legal system itself. Because one of the things we need to understand is setting up the strategy because the strategy is yours. But I'm going to give you a kind of how to get away with murder setup. Now, many of us have no real clue of what a defense strategy should consist of, although it's a requirement. Because, again, the Sixth Amendment guarantees the defendant the right to choose the objective of his defense and to insist that his counsel refrain from admitting guilt. Why? Because you have the right to be presumed innocent. Now, the things that you're going to concentrate on, because no decision can be made without all information. And remember, I talked about even in Georgia, anything you do not request Anything you do not request, you cannot bring up later. Anything, so your foundation has to be set up properly the first time. Because if it's not, you're standing in a hole digging. Now, again, I'm going to go deeper into this. Because when we're talking about the, the overall grounds of this, the Sixth Amendment guarantees each criminal defendant the assistance of counsel for his defense. The defendant does not surrender control entirely to counsel. For the Sixth Amendment, in granting to the accused personally the right to make his defense. Because no matter what we're doing, and we're going at this, even with the payment to our employee, 
they are still our employee because they are still just an assistant. So when we're taking this, we must know what it is that we're in taking. Because decisions are reserved for the client, which would be you, including whether to plead guilty, waive the right to a jury trial, testify on one's own behalf, or forego an appeal. Because the autonomy to decide that the objective of the defense is to assert innocent belong in the reserved for client category. This is part of the review that I'm doing because I'm kind of running through this because I want to get to the other aspects of it. Because even in Weaver v. Massachusetts, when a client makes it plain that the objective of his defense is to maintain innocence of the charged criminal acts and to pursue an acquittal, his lawyer must abide by that objective and may not override it by conceding guilt. Everything that I'm talking about, everything that I'm giving you, tells you you have the power. You are more powerful than the person that you are employing. Because keep that in mind. I always want you to understand that. Now, I, I'm, I, I know right now, I know right now a lot of times we're we're looking at this and we're listening to me and it, it becomes again repetitious. But then we have to understand why the repetition is there and what the setup is for. Because when I give you the quote unquote things that you should look for in your defense strategy, I want you to understand every line of this, every context of this, every being, every fiber of this is for your defense. This is part of your weaponizing. Because when the court allowed counsel to usurp your ideals and control an issue that was your prerogative, it becomes a violation. Because what they'll try to use this thing, because you remember I talked to you about harmless error. Because they'll actually slide your attorney's, I, I guess, malfeasance cooperation with the prosecution a structural error so again they're looking for reasons to dismiss their actions through their actions because you're not taking control because if you don't control it they will because an error is structural if it is not designed to protect the defendants from erroneous conviction but instead protects some other interests, such as the fundamental legal principle that a defendant must be allowed to make his own choices about the proper way to protect his own liberty. Understand, it's not erroneous if it protects some other interests. And what they would actually use as your silence is a means of someone else controlling your destiny. So it's not a structural error then. Because the whole context of it is you being in control of you. Now, when we're going through this and we look at something like the council's pursuit of strategy over your vicarious and repeated protests of innocence violates your constitutional right to have the fundamental decision regarding your case because doing that is violating your right to due process and the right to a fair trial now the presumption of innocence is something that is required if you insist on it I'm gonna say that again the requirement of innocence is a violation if only if you, you know, let me, let me, let me, let me rephrase that because that, that sounded wrong in my head. It only becomes a violation if you do not require being presumed innocent. How do you do that? You do that in writing. All your communications with your attorney should be done in writing. Why? Because the pen is mightier than the sword. Those that record history make history. All of these things are requirements. 
because any waiver right it must be done with intent and intent is done through writing because the right to defend is personal and the defendant's choice in exercising that right must be honored out of the respect of the individual which is the lifeblood of law it is done because it is your choice to exercise because I've been talking about that for a very long time exercising exercise we have to exercise and the right to appear pro se exists to affirm the dignity and autonomy of the accused you have the right to represent your own interests you have the right and duty to take care of your own defense you have the duty of you so now as again the accused as in Gannett v. De Pasquale, the accused, not a lawyer, is the master of his own fate. Understand that. You have to keep understanding and keep going as you keep growing. These are things that most people don't want. They don't want the responsibility. They want to be able to blame someone else for their inadequacies. Because even when we talked about the trial, trial management or expectation management, Counsel provides his or her assistance by making decisions such as what arguments to pursue, what evident evidentiary objections to raise, and what arguments to conclude regarding the admission of evidence. Because again, these are things that you can bring up. Because when we're talking about defense strategy, one of the things you're going to talk about is the discredit of witnesses. Right? That's the easy part of it. Now, why? We talked about you have the right to confront those that accuse you. Let's say, and I'm going to start off with the traffic ticket because that is the most common. Any citation, because it goes into this. Remember I told you the police officer is making a conscious choice, right? Now, you request a detailed discovery. Well, the prosecutor states, I'm only going to use the police officer's statement and this citation. Well, here's how hearsay works. There has to be evidence to support that officer's statement. Now, that officer now must testify to the statements he or she wrote, which then gives you the opportunity to confront that said officer, which now makes the Jiglio information viable. Because one can't be done without the other. The, the prosecutor can only use all the information they have to make a decision. They're making a choice to prosecute you. They're using just the cop's information to now prosecute you. You then request Jiglio information or Brady List information from that officer. If that prosecutor cannot then provide that and then continues or proceeds to prosecute, that is a malicious prosecution. Why? Because they are not operating in good faith or with clean hands, which means with honor, honor and integrity and honesty. They are not operating in that means. So therefore, you are not allowed the right to confront witnesses against you. And you have the right to do what? Put police character on trial. This is why the Brady List is important, because all of this ties into one another. Because again, this is part of defense strategy, discredit witnesses, that's one. But understanding the context of it, even if you're doing self-representation, the self-representation is based on the fundamental legal principle that a defendant must be allowed to make his own choices about the proper way to protect his liberty. Understanding that, our system of laws are generally presumed that the criminal defendant, after being fully informed, knows his own best interest and does not need them dictated by the state. I'm going to say that one more time because many of us get lost in the system because they say, my public defender said our system of laws based on Martinez versus the Court of Appeals and it's a 2000 case. Our system of laws generally presumes that the criminal defendant after being fully informed knows his own best interest and does not need them dictated by the state. So when your public defender is telling you something, 
you pretty much inform him that you are just an assistant. You are, as long as I'm not asking you to break the law, are required to do something. And I've actually noticed the new thing. They said, I can't give you discovery. Then the question would be, if I can't get discovery, how can I make a decision on strategy? How can we discuss strategy if I am not privy to discovery? Which is then why you move them out the way because they are not good people. And we put those bad people on the Brady list because we're going to make them even more worthless. Because we're going to remove them from the system. But now, when a client expressly observes the objection of his of objective of his defense is to maintain innocence to the charged crime, his lawyer must abide by that objective and may not override it. When a client expressly asserts that the objective of his defense is to maintain innocence of the charged criminal acts, his lawyer must abide by their objective and may not override it. Why? Because you are the captain now. This is your ship. No one else has that opportunity or even that right. You hold that. Because here's a, here's a great part about it. As much trash as I talk about the American Bar Association, as much as I go in on a lot of these things, one of the things you can also say is I use it like a knife. Because again, you can't argue with yourself. The American Bar Association's model rule of professional conduct 1.2a, a lawyer shall abide by a client's decisions concerning the objectives of the representation. I'm going to say that one more time because the American Bar Association Model Rule of Professional Conduct 1.2a. A lawyer shall abide by a client's decisions concerning the objectives of the representation. You are just an assistant. You are just an assistant because the only thing you can do is develop a trial strategy and discuss it with the client. You can develop a trial strategy and discuss it because decision lies with the client. The decision concerning the objective of the representation, a lawyer must abide by the client's decision. And as much as I say this, again, going through, going through, and I keep giving you Source after source after source after source after source. And many people will still reject it. Many people will still reject it. Because what happens is it goes against the programming. They don't want to believe that someone is doing something to them that is not in their best interest. They want to keep believing that the world is flat and that's how it goes. They want to believe that the actual understanding of what goes on with them is better suited coming from someone else. Because it's easier to allow someone else to be responsible for you than to accept the responsibility of you. Because here's the great part about it. If a client declines to participate in his defense, then the attorney may permissibly guide the defense pursuant to the strategy that the attorney believes to be in the defendant's best interest. And generally, that will be to side with the state. So if you don't take it over, someone else will. And this is actually something that's in writing. If a client declines to participate in his or her defense, then the attorney may permissibly guide the defendant's um, strategy that they believe is best. You either take charge of you or someone else will. Presented with express statements of the client's will to maintain innocence, the counsel may not steer the ship the other way.
I want you to understand. Just, just, just let that sit in. Just let that sit in. Even if they have a better idea, it's your life. You choose it. Their actual oath, their membership card to the American Bar Association says they have to follow you. I'm giving you four Supreme Court cases that say they have to follow you. I'm showing you in legal precedent they have to follow you. But they'll still tell you that you are not powerful. They are more powerful than you. They'll tell you that. Yet, everything I'm telling you is counter to that. Because a lawyer is not placed in a professional with embarrassing position when he is reluctantly required to go to trial in a weak case because that decision is clearly attributed to his client. Because most of them don't understand law anyway. So when they're looking at a weak case, it's considered weak because they don't want to go through the strategy of discrediting someone such as a police officer. They don't want to attack the evidence. They don't want to go through the probable cause with a fine-tooth comb. They don't want to examine the chain of custody. You know, offer a vigorous defense. And what happens is, because even like I talked about the first 48, no matter what we do and what we see, we laugh and joke about it, but the first 48, what happens? 48, well, we can't solve that. We need some help. I often tell you that police are not trained to solve crimes. 48 hours, they're doing something else. But then all of a sudden, they have suspects and they're arresting people and they're doing, they're interrogating. And then you also see them manipulating instead of looking for the truth. They're just, they're just lying. They're flat out lying. But again, these are the good guys, but they just flat out lie to you and begin to manipulate you begin to do tactics that, you know, put you in a cold room. Then they give you stuff like coffee and soda. Why to add caffeine to you? Why? Because the effects of caffeine on the human body. Whoops. The manipulation begins. But again, these are the good people because they are actually doing something. And not necessarily the right thing because, again, even in those cases... Three out of four times they're doing that, they are wrong. Because even Terry V. Ohio says they can't use a hunch or guess. And what happens, they put together a science project. Because they've used the word in Terry V. Ohio as hypothesis. They get evidence to fit their idea of what the crime actually was. They manufacture evidence to fit the idea of what their thought of the crime was was actually but then we're supposed to believe them and trust in them and then we have these attorneys where we don't participate in our own defense and then we talk about how bad the system is the fundamental legal principle that a defendant must be allowed to make his own choices about the proper way to protect his own liberty It's not just a strategy. It's what you're supposed to. Who who can defend shall defend. And it actually says he who can fight should fight. But again, if you can defend yourself, you should defend yourself. These are the context of what the basis of law actually is. Self-representation. They actually, and here's the great part about it, most people didn't even know that one of my favorite presidents, Abraham Lincoln, most people didn't know that he did not carry a bar card. Yet, he represented hundreds of people in court. Why was he not arrested for um, practicing law? Because again, you can't be subjugated by the state's requirements or ideals. 
and there are also other things, even even in law, because it's called jailhouse lawyers, but it's called next friend, which allow, even if you're part of a company or an organization or even a group, you can speak on behalf of members of that group without being a bar cart carrying attorney. And once that happens, because even even in New York, they spoke about the, the priest who was representing immigrants at at several hearings, criminal and also their uh what do you call, asylum hearings. He didn't carry a bar card, but yet they'll tell you you have to have a bar card in order to practice law. You don't have a license. When the American Bar Association will tell you there is no license for practicing law. And I'm actually waiting for someone to actually say otherwise because I'll then just drop the email that I have from the American Bar Association that actually says that. But anyway, <laughs> y'all love me some me. The Constitution gives us the authority to decide real cases and controversies. When they're talking about that, the Constitution gives the court the authority to decide real cases and controversies. The courts do not have the right to simplify or otherwise change the facts of a case in order to make their work easier to achieve a desired result. Now, why is that? Many of us say the, the court assigned me an attorney. I have to take it. But I actually just told you that it's your prerogative and you can fire or hire an attorney at will. Literally. Literally, you have the authority to manufacture and take care of every aspect of your defense. Because no matter what happens, you can choose to enter a plea, you can reject a plea. Your counsel does not have the total autonomy to actually make you sit in and go through anything that you don't want to go through. You don't have to listen to anything you don't want to listen to. It's your prerogative. But I want you to understand this. When you're exercising, you can no longer blame someone else for your inadequacies. You have the opportunity to contact me right now. Because many of you think time, time is going to make things better. I even talked about yesterday, time only gives your enemies an advantage over you. I'm here now. Use me now. I'm one of the greatest resources that you can come across at any point. You're listening to me because you find some value somewhere in what I'm saying because you've been able to verify something. You can continue to believe that time, time, time is on your side. But understand, time waits for no man. When you're looking at the decisions that pretty much engulf your life, that makes a determination on how you live, your liberty, your aspects, and even your protection. You are the master of that, and you should never allow anyone else to become part or dictate that to you. You are more powerful than you could ever know.